not the best example, but this is uh, Eladia canadensis. And this is not a terrible macrophyte to have in our pond. It's uh, got some good value to it. And I've always been of the uh, opinion that you don't want a pristine pond. You don't want something that's crystal clear because then it's usually devoid of life. I like to see the fish and the frogs and the geese and all the rest down here. And they need this stuff. This is shelter for them. You'll often find little things like dragonfly nymphs and mayfly nymphs and little pieces of macro invertebrates just living on this stuff. So it's not that we want all of this out. And this is not a bad one to have in here. Our problem is that it's we, ha we get too much of it. Uh, little looks like a uh, mayfly nymph. <laughs> Alright, so. so again we're looking at another milfoil here. It still has the cut ends if they were cut with scissors. Has the world pattern. We're probably, where are we? We're probably a good 75 feet from the boat house now. The majority of what we see here is the Eladia. There's too much of it, but again, that's not a problem other than the fact that it's too much. This is the Eladia plant. Um, it's always been in the pond. It's not a bad plant to have in the pond. Again, just that it's it's getting to, uh, too prolific in this area. A little floating buckwheat here, which is not a problem either. And we'll just keep looking. This is actually pretty cool. As we see the bottom. All I'm seeing right here is Eladia. Compared to this. But again, this is what we've always had in this pond here. See how it, it kind of whirls upward? Mm -hmm. So this is the coontail. Again, it's not as, it's not a bad plant to have in here, it, but it doesn't serve as much purpose as the LED is. It's just kind of here, here. But this one, as well as the LED, that, those are the two prevalent macrophytes that we've always had in this pond. And we always will. There's no way we're ever gonna get rid of them nor do we want to get completely rid of them. Again, they do serve a purpose. For those who like scientific names, Kuntail is a Ceratophilium diversum, which nobody likes scientific names. This is all Kuntail. This cove right here is where we found all of the um, water chestnuts. This whole thing was just blanketed with them. I'm really surprised there isn't any more action in this cove that's similar to where we had at the boathouse. Must have something to do with the sunlight. This is another coat of eaten right here. This one right here looks like amplifolius. But that's okay. All these floating leaves in here, that's all a species of photophagina, and that's, that's fine. Snails love to attach themselves to You want to get some snails, just grab some of these macroverts. Mac oh, we got another. This one here is another, well, that one's, no, that's a mayfly. We have a lot of milfoil in our area and some of it is perfectly fine it's not invasive and it looks very similar but uh, without the flower it's very hard to identify the exact species it is but this is this is milfoil there's no two ways about it and the fact that it has that feathery pattern to it and it's kind of almost like it was cut off with scissors that's, that's kind of an indication that this may be the Eurasian milfoil, which is the invasive form, which is the form we certainly don't want within our pond here. <laughs>